I am very lucky to have a lot of reptiles, but I don't show you most of them. And today I'm gonna tell you why and show you the five that you probably really wanna see. My name's Adam, this is Frankie. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So as it turns out, filming with reptiles isn't that easy. A lot of them are wormy and squirmy, maybe bitey or flighty, and that's the reason why I film most of the time with diamond. Because these videos take a certain amount of concentration, and uh, well, if I'm concentrating on the animal, how can I concentrate on what I'm trying to tell you? But recently, I've had a little bit of help in the reptile room with things like, oh, you see what I mean? With things like breeding and cleaning and feeding, and that gives me more time to socialize these animals. So there's a lot of animals I can show you interacting with me that probably I wouldn't have been able to before. First of all, number five, Frankie. Frankie is a Fiji banded iguana. Now, a lot of people don't know what this is because they're very rare. Here in Canada and over in Europe and other places, we're allowed to have these, but in the US, they are illegal. Now, we did a video last week, right here you can watch, where they made the list of most illegal reptiles and I explained why these animals are illegal, but the main point here is this animal was a little bit flighty, a little bit difficult to handle, almost a little bit bitey too, and now all of a sudden we've calmed him down enough where I can show him to you. And I'm so glad we have because, well, Frankie is very beautiful. One of the most beautiful lizards that I've ever seen in my entire life. I am so lucky to own this lizard. Fiji banded iguanas, this is a full-size male or pretty close to full-size. It seems like he's gonna jump again. I don't know what he wants the camera so bad for. He was really good the last time we filmed together. But either way, these are a much more docile, much easier to deal with green iguana. But of course, they aren't even close to the same geographic range because these guys are gonna be found Fiji, Tonga, that area of the world. So the Fijian archipelago, they have these big long tails just like you'd see with a green iguana, but they have amazing colors that you'd never see with a green iguana. And their attitude isn't the same. They don't have that type of, I don't know, cantankerous attitude when they go through a puberty. Very similar diet, similar type body style, but these guys are much smaller. Now this tail, don't get me wrong, is about twice the length of his body, but his body is like, very small, very short, in that it is about, I don't know, probably smaller than a bearded dragon by quite a bit. And when you handle this animal, it doesn't feel fragile, but he definitely doesn't feel stout like a bearded dragon either. So that's the reason that I never show him is that he was just difficult to work with. And today he's being a little bit cantankerous, not cantankerous, but flighty, I would say, because he wants to get out of my hands. But that's why we didn't talk about him too much. He's gonna be seen way more on the channel if you want. Let me know in the comment section, do you wanna see more of an animal that you'll probably never see at expos, especially if you're from the US, or uh, or not? Because I'm gonna show them anyway, but I'd like to know what you think. Oh, and there's way more Frankie content on Instagram. That's all, constantly what I do. Just, you can see right here, follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Just constant Frankie material and pickle reels for some reason. Okay, let's move on to number four. Number four is still a work in progress and something you can see me handling and working with here, but not tame enough to do videos with where I can actually concentrate on what I'm talking about, George. George is, well, the biggest skink in the world or the biggest species of skink, the Solomon Island prehensile tail skink or monkey tail skink or whatever you wanna say. Now I've got a pair of these guys, George and Abu. You can guess in the comment section why I named them that. If you're a 90s kid, you definitely know for sure. But either way, I think they're pretty clever names. They're very clever animals. And by clever, I mean, it looks like there's nothing, nothing going on in their head, but they are actually kind of smart. Now the biggest skink in the world needs a big enclosure. And that's why we have this four by four by two enclosure. I'm gonna do a video probably called why I keep my most expensive lizards in my cheapest enclosure. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comments, hit the like button. Either way, they have a big enclosure and they are an arboreal lizard, just like the Fiji banded iguana. Now, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for, there's a company that's sending me a six foot by four foot by two foot enclosure. Those monkey tails are gonna go in there and then Frankie is gonna go into their old enclosure, which is that four by four by two. Now that's a perfect size for a Fiji banded. I think it's a little bit too small for a pair of monkey tails. We're just waiting for that enclosure to come. But either way, they're gonna climb like crazy. These guys are absolutely fun to watch. They're gonna be moving and grooving basically all day. Kind of an interesting species because although they are an herbivore, they are going to be able to eat something that most herbivores can't, pothos. Now, if you know anything about plants or if you know anything about what you shouldn't be feeding your animals, pothos is always on that list because it is toxic, but not to monkey tail skinks. Monkey tail skinks can eat tons and tons and tons. I put one of those big hanging basket pothos that you buy for like 14 dollars 
from Walmart. I put it in there, I turned around and it was gone. We're talking within hours, this thing was completely gone. Now normally I'm gonna feed these guys from my garden. That's what we're doing, well I guess in two or three, no, four or five. If winter ever ends, we'll be planting a big garden. And uh, well, that's how you feed them because these guys cost something like 25 bucks a week just in vegetables to feed. Oh, Frankie's an herbivore too, by the way. Look how handsome he is. What are you so jumpy for? Now, the reason I said George is because, well, Abu is great too, but Abu is pregnant. So if you don't know, monkey tail skinks have one big baby. It's the equivalent of a human pumping out a six-year-old. Pumping out, that's such a weird way to, wow. Gross. Hey Jeff, want a kid? <laughs> How about twins? <laughs> <laughs> Polluting the earth. So it's a big baby and uh, she might be a little bit defensive because of that and she feels strange. Like I feel like I'm gonna hurt the baby if I handle her too roughly. George seems like he's cool with being held. You just gotta be uh, wary with these guys because they have crazy claws. We're talking serious claws. They mean business and serious jaws too. And that's so that they can eat that vegetation. They can crunch through shells of things. These guys are no joke. You don't want to get bit by a monkey tail and their claws aren't that fun either. Number three, this is one I can handle no problem, Bonnie. Now, Bonnie is a Schneider skink. And the reason I just don't have her in my hands right now is switching between a bunch of reptiles is kind of a pain, but you can see me handling her here. And also I am gonna go have to dig her up in order to facilitate the B-roll you're probably seeing right now because she is buried underneath her water dish, underneath a log. These guys are really cool species. I used to talk about them a lot. They're just not that popular for some reason. Now, Schneider skinks, in my opinion, are very similar to a fire skink that everybody knows and loves, but they like it a little bit more arid. In my opinion, they're maybe not more beautiful, just more unique. And because fire skinks are so common in comparison, I just think it's a little bit cooler to have Schneider skinks. You can cohab them if you do it correctly. They are egg layers. They're gonna eat things, well, it's an omnivorous diet technically, but they're gonna eat tons and tons of bugs mostly. And it's fun to watch them hunt. And they're really easy because they have slow metabolisms, even though they like it really, really hot in the enclosure. So you don't have to feed tons and tons and tons like with a lot of other lizards that might like really warmer temperatures. So I just think they're easy, they're stout, they're beautiful, really cool to handle. This one's Bonnie. There's also Clyde, but but Clyde is like very buried. They also brewmate a little bit and I think that's what's going on with him. But Bonnie's usually out to play for a couple hours a day. I'm a poet now. Okay, let's move on. Before we move on, thank you to today's sponsor, Into the AM. I've been rocking with you guys forever, the very first sponsor of this channel, and I've been wearing their clothes ever since. Makes me feel cool and comfortable because the clothes actually fit your body and have the coolest designs I've ever seen. And if you go to intotheam.com slash WWR, you can get not only this shirt, but you can get v-necks and hats and sleeveless and all these amazing graphic tees, and you get them at a wicked discount just for using my code, intotheam.com slash WWR. Thanks so much for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to the list. Number two, this is Blastoise. I'm a big fan of tortoises, you guys know this. And in fact, my cherry head tortoises, Blastoise and War Turtle, right? So I'll show you them both, it doesn't really matter. They're in the other room, right? So these guys, they have a big stock tank that's made for like livestock. You put it out on your farm so your livestock can drink out of your stock tank, right? Or some people use them as ice baths, but either way, uh, they live in this for the winter. And then in the summer, they have an outdoor pen that I built that's attached to my house. So literally leg bolted to my house, to the brick wall of my house, right behind me actually, if you walk through this wall, you walk into the tortoise enclosure. So we're talking, I think it's 12, 12 foot or 16 foot by eight foot, something like that. And it's got uh, screen mesh over top of it to make sure that cats can't get in or predators, skunks, raccoons, things like that. So it's predator proof, but it allows for the sun to come in because this is facing west, which means during the later portion of the day, they're gonna get tons and tons of sun. And because of the orientation of where it is, they're gonna get sun for most of the day. So as it warms up during the day, and then they can crawl and hide at night. Now, the reason you don't see them is because they're in the other room. I don't film very much in there. It's just a, a large space on the floor to put these guys in a stock tank. Uh, tortoises need a lot of room. And then in the summertime, they're outside. So they're just never around. And also holding a tortoise like this is weird because they're, they're, it's just like a boulder with legs. That's basically it. Another herbivore. That's three herbivores on this list. But the next one definitely isn't an herbivore and one that you've definitely not seen before. 
unless you watched the B-roll of last week's video. Okay, let's get on to number one. Number one, also in the other room, this is Jasmine. So reticulated pythons are something that I was always a Burmese python guy. I always compared them. If you want to see a Burmese python reticulated python comparison, I'd love to make one for you if you want it. But these are technically the longest snakes in the world. But what I have are the super dwarf variety. So Jasmine is a 75% super dwarf reticulated python. Now she is a tiger morph. There's other genetics. I'll put it here. I can't remember off the top of my head. Genetics don't matter because I'm not going to breed her anyway but I just think that she's really fun to handle because she's so big, because she is so long but skinny, and by long, she's not that long, maybe, I don't know, eight feet, something like that. That's where super dwarfs kind of top out usually. But of course, anything that has a morph in it won't be a 100% super dwarf. So she's a high percentage super dwarf, but we've got some mainland blood in her. And that's basically, anyway, go watch Reach Out Reptiles if you want an explanation, because he'll do a better job than I ever could. Garrett, hopefully someone goes to the channel, because those are the coolest videos. And that's what got me into reticulated pythons in the first place. I got to visit Reach Out Reptiles in Pittsburgh a couple of times. That's what Garrett specializes in is Super Dwarf Retex, pure localities, morphs, things like that. He's the guy that made a 20 foot enclosure or is making a 20 foot enclosure for a 20 foot snake. Crazy, that guy is crazy in the best sort of way. Either way, these are small enough snakes that I can handle them by myself carefully, of course, but safely. So if you don't know, uh, in my experience, in my opinion, handling snakes over 10 feet by yourself is silly goose stuff because if for whatever reason they thought you were food by accident, these snakes never mean to harm you, then it could just be a touch dangerous. And we're talking about like 0.01% chance anything bad would happen. But I just think that uh, erring on the side of caution with animals like that is the best way to do it. Now, reticulated pythons are very smart, but they need big enclosures, and that's why they're not for everybody. So what I'm doing is I'm outfitting these guys in really big enclosures. I can't wait to show you. I have five of them now, but I'm gonna be rehoming some. Basically, there's a YouTube channel, Snake Cake Exotics. Matthew gave me his collection. He wanted to rehome them and find them really good homes. And that's what I'm gonna do here in Canada for some of them. And then I'll keep a couple others. And Jasmine will definitely be one that I keep. I love this animal. And you'll see more of her on the channel because she'll be out of quarantine soon and get one of these big giant enclosures. So there you go. Those are the five reptiles that I don't show too much, but definitely will start showing more of if you like. Please let me know in the comments what you think. A uh, video idea for next week. That's where I get all the video ideas, by the way. And hit the like button and the subscribe. It really helps. As always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys have seen a lot of Frankie. I'm showing you guys updates on the egg laying season that we have with the breeding projects in the other room over there with hogno snakes and the fat tail geckos. First fat tail gecko eggs ever in my entire career last week. Anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you get all that and more. And because we do videos twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.